jotting the right things down, we've got some wonderful revelation in the Word of God. God has given me permission to share some insights. Now, we talk about a lot of things, and I talk about pictures. I teach in word pictures. And I don't know about you, that I had a wonderful teacher years ago when I was a kid, and he taught in word pictures. In other words, he brought you in to see what it was supposed to be like to see the picture so that your faith is encouraged because word pictures bring hope, show you the design that your faith can work towards. Everyone say amen. We've taught you that man is a spirit, has a soul, lives in a body. But many Christians don't understand where each placement is. For example, we take our flesh and we crucify it daily so it doesn't get in the way with our walk before God. We have accepted Jesus into our spirit man. Amen. So we're a new creature in Christ Jesus. But if we don't get our thinking in check and renew our thinking, then our old thinking is constantly going to come up, and you're going to hear yourself say, yeah, but what if? And we want to do that. Smile at your neighbor and say, thank you. I don't want to do that. Amen. So we've got some scriptures that we're going to put up in just a minute, but I want to talk to you a little bit more. We found out that there are two kingdoms working, Becky. There's a kingdom of light. Can you say amen? It's also called the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. Jesus is light, isn't he? And he lives in our heart. Amen. So there's the kingdom of light, just keep it simple, and the kingdom of darkness. Kingdom means dominion, power, and influence. Kingdom of light, dominion, power, and influence. Kingdom of darkness, how it affects us, kingdom, power, and influence. We know who's the author of darkness, not God. We also know who the author of light is. So Christian, believer, lover of God, you have to go through Christ in order to get the enlightenment that you need that once was taken away from mankind. Everyone say, I'm going to get back what was stolen from me. Can you say it? Say it out loud. And I'm going to get back my nourishment drink this morning. Amen. Again, two kingdoms, remember? The kingdom of darkness... What does darkness represent? It represents hiding or cloaking or keeping things from. That's how Satan operates. His job is to keep you from the truth of God and knowing who God is. Remember the lie he first said. Remember, God knows that when you eat this, you're going to be just like him. He's hiding truth from you, Adam and Eve. No, he isn't. Satan's a liar. He's full of deception. He cloaks things and hides them away from humanity. He's even using governments to hide things from their people, things that they should be knowing. You should know exactly our history of the United States because if you don't, we're apt to repeat the same foolish mistakes, and we don't want to do that. Amen. So kingdom of darkness hides cloaks, keeps you from, and the kingdom of light reveals, exposes, and enlightens you in such a way that your mind becomes more spiritual. You mean, Carrie, you can have a spiritual mind? Yes. In fact, Jesus said, and, and Paul quoted again, you will have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Now, here's it. The mind of Christ is not your head. The mind of Christ is in your heart, in your spirit, man. The mind of Christ is Jesus Christ. He lives in your spirit. And if you allow him in your heart to teach you, he will guide you like a balancer to keep you through life so you don't overdo things, kill yourself. And he will guide you back to God. And he sent the Holy Spirit to instruct us and to help us to understand the word, didn't he? Wonderful, isn't it? All right, so you ready to get into this? We're going to call this Hidden in Christ in God. Hidden in Christ in God. You know, I, I studied the Word of God. And I can remember years ago learning the Word and how to do sermons and doing all the Bible college, trying to raise a family, trying to do this, trying to do that. Can, that sounds like I'm a little too busy. And remember, 
God doesn't want you too busy to learn from him. Amen? Or too much worry to keep you from thinking about him. So, hidden in God, in Christ, in God. This is in the Reigning in Life in Christ series. So, blessings to you, church family. Today, we're going to give out God's wisdom concerning how to use his weaponry and how to stay protected. Do you believe he wants us protected? We know that there are only two kingdoms operating within the earth. We are in the right one. Can you say amen? And that's the kingdom of light. Now, here's the deal. Your body still wants to listen to what the devil wants to do. That's why we have to take our flesh daily and say, Lord, I lay it at your charge, crucify it so that it doesn't dictate to us because it has a wrong nature. Do you remember one time where Jesus looked at his disciples and they said, hey, Jesus, do you want us to call lightning down from heaven? Remember, Jesus looked at his disciples. That was Peter, James, and John, sons of thunder. And he looked at him. He says, you don't know what spirit you're of. In other words, I don't fight that way. I don't bring lightning down in the New Testament and crush everybody. Hello. Neither do I want you so angry that you get hurt. We fight the Jesus way. Can you say amen? We're going to cover that today. I've got some wonderful nuggets. Well, let me fi finish my paragraph. I'm almost getting ahead of myself, and I don't want to do that. So you and I are right in the middle of two kingdoms in operation, trying to fight. Are they actually warring? Yeah, over ours, our souls, and our family. We have people in our families that are not saved. Our job at least is to bring them before God, place them on the altar, and to pray diligently for them. And then, after you've given, from, given them to God, leave them there and thank God every day for God working on them. Say amen. All right, and that's the beauty of what we have. All right, so these two kingdoms are in opposition. One hides, one reveals. So if you want to know more about God, who should you pursue? God through Christ. So if you haven't developed a deeper prayer life, you're not going to get a lot. You're going to get hand-me-down revelations. Good stuff's going to come out of your past, but other good pastors too. But if you want to go in and get the nuggets where it's so personal to you, never forget it, you're going to have to pursue God and give him time so he can reveal it to you. Come on, say amen. And then you're going to have to search the scripture long enough for him to show it to you so the Holy Spirit can walk you through the truth. Remember, Holy Spirit came to guide us into all truth. So for believers, it is important we be trained on how to walk and maintain our victory or our walk or dwelling place in Christ. Say amen. Through our consistency, now this is scary for many Christians, through our consistency with God on a daily basis, okay, creates the growth and the stability that all of us need. We see a lot of people who love God, but they're so insta instable or there's so much instability. Stability comes from hearing the truth and doing the truth and spending time with God. Hearing the truth and doing the truth and spending time with God. Well, about, what about all these other things? Didn't Jesus say, let them worry for themselves, about themselves. Don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. In other words, if you put me in charge, let me be in charge. Have you ever, we're, we're praying, maybe you've done this, I, it happens to me quite a bit. And I'll be praying and, and thanking God, and I just have peace and almost feel guilty that I'm resting in a peace. And then all of a sudden my brain, because of its conditioning, gives me something I should get up and do. Wave your hands at me if you've had that happen. Right in the middle of something, you thought, I better get up and do this. Now remember, we told you, and this is most believers, again, don't know this, that the enemy does have access to our thoughts. He throws thoughts in here. But he does not, can't read our minds. 
So he plays a game. He's hoping we try to follow God in the physical flesh. For example, to be in church, and then you're on your phone watching something else. You know, that's what the devil does. That person is what we call one of the four grounds, and that's the first one, wayside. In other words, oh, the word is good, it's wonderful, and everything is cast aside. There's no fruit to develop. And we don't want to be a wayside listener. We don't want to be one of those rocky listeners. That's when everything else is in the way you can't even get into church. Now, that's not good. So please don't get under condemnation. Just do what the word asks you to do, and God will help you to do it. The third kind is the most dangerous for Christians, and that's thorny ground. Thorny ground is the cares of this world, the lusts of other things, and the deceitfulness of riches. They enter into our attention, and they choke the word. So they become more important than the very word in our relationship with God. Everyone say, God forbid. I'm good ground. There you go. And let me finish my paragraph. So the question has been, if God has so well protected us, why then do believers have so many problems? Good question, huh? I think by now some of you know the answers to that. The word of God has all the answers, but we have to seek God with the help of the Holy Spirit to give us the answer like seed so it grows up and takes care. If you have anything in your life that is weak, do not let the enemy beat you up with it. Remember, all of our infirmities and weaknesses came from Adam. And if we have hurt ourselves, like in the past, I've, I've caused myself to have scars. There's still physically, I have a scar on my wrist. I won't tell you all the history. If you want to know, we'll talk at lunch. But anyway, I have a scar on my wrist. But the pain of it has gone away. But the scar is still there. That's like our life. God, we, many of us have been scarred by life, made wrong decisions. But see, we're to forget the past. So there might be still some reminders, scars left. But God has taken all the pain. Let him have the pain. Amen. Can you say amen? Remember, every day to a believer is a new day. Why? Because the things you did yesterday, only the good in Jesus remains. All the things you didn't do burns up. So you move into today with the blessings of yesterday. So if you're wise and you're smart like you are, every day you're mounting up blessings. One day to the next day to the next day to the next day. And if you're presenting yourself to God one day to the next day and you're being built up, the kingdom's being built up, and suddenly you're being built up a spiritual house, God's house. And you become so well protected and so well shielded that you're a threat to the enemy. Later on, I will tell you how that somebody who's really on fire with God, if they don't get their doctrine and understanding of God down, they'll leave doors open. And I've seen so many, hundreds of evangelists, teachers, wonderful men and women of God, that somehow the enemy's worked his way into their, their tank and cracked their foundations. And we want and believe that those of all of you will not allow this to happen because you'll grow holy and properly and you'll find peace and rest in Christ and you'll understand that you use Jesus as a weapon and you don't fight and involve yourself in the flesh. Say amen somebody. All right, let's read our, our scriptures. Hidden in Christ in God. First one is Ephesians 2. Verse 1 says, and you he made alive. Say, I'm alive. Who were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's the devil, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom 
Also, we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, just as others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, this is why we always to be thankful every day, rich in mercy because of his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, made us alive together with Christ. Whenever you run off and do your own thing, you're severed. Not, not, you don't lose your salvation. You're just in the flesh. So your growth stops at where you leave Christ. Because Jesus might say, stop here and enjoy. And you're cannot continually walking on. Woo! Anyway, you see the illustration. It goes on. But God who is rich in mercy, aren't you glad? Even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, made us al alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Past tense. 2,000 or a little over 2,000 years ago, Jesus rose from the dead, sits at the right hand. And anyone that accepts Jesus Christ in their heart, all of a sudden gets everything and all the benefits that Christ made available. But we get it with him and through him. Say amen. God does not merit our good works without Christ. And he says, by grace you have been saved and raised us up. This is the cool part. And made us sit together in authority, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So by accepting Jesus Christ, you become a son or a daughter of God, and you're in authority. You now have been placed out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of light. And now everything that the Holy Spirit has been assigned to is to teach you and train you how to walk within that kingdom and to stay within your tank. Now, I'm going to bring that up again because we're going to talk about it. In fact, you're going to, you heard it here first. And if you start hearing others talking about being in a tank and we're armored, now you're going to, they didn't borrow it from me. It's the same Holy Spirit showing people. You know what I mean? So our tank is Jesus. If we are in Jesus every day, present ourselves in Jesus every day, we're in the tank. That means that if Satan wants to get to you, he has to go through the tank. He has to go through Jesus. Now, are you going to think that Jesus is going to let the devil get to you? But how come then it gets to me? Because you're doing and saying and you still are not applying some areas of your life. No, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. Because of those openings, you're letting the water leak in and your house is getting wet. That water is not good. So what do we do? We check our bases. We give ourselves a, a checkup from the neck up to make sure. And if there's anything that's open, just go to God and say, Lord, if I have any opening, shield me. Remember I told you a while ago, if you try to keep things from people and hide and, and be secretive, God will expose you. But if you go to God and say, Lord, I'm having a terrific bad time. I'm, not, I'm frustrated. God will cover you. Remember, he's your father. Don't lie to your father. You can't, right? <laughs> Come on. So that's all part of the flesh. Be open and honest. Amen. All right. So another thing. So made us sit together. So we are with Christ. Can you say amen? The next one, you've heard it so many times. One of my favorite New Testament scriptures, Colossians 3, 1 through 3. If this is now, it says that we're sitting with Christ in heavenly places, right? If then you were raised with Christ, amen, seek, pursue, and desire after. That's what the word seek means. Those things which are spiritual or above. Keep your eyes off of mankind. Listen, I know I'm entertaining, but if you pick on my faults, your eyes are not on Jesus. I have to use me so everyone's safe. 
If we pick on people's faults, our eyes are not on Jesus, and we might not hear the right things. I know people that are ab abrasive, and they're coarse in the way they deal with people. They're the ones that are always stumbling and falling, because they're always irritated and agitated. Doesn't Satan love that? Listen, his whole tire trick, everyone would say, what is it? Is to get you in conflict about something. Doesn't matter what. It could be a noble conflict. Because we're not made to be upset and take matters in our own hands. This is not the Old Testament. We're made to go to Jesus and let him take matters in his hands. Say amen. Our rock in our sling is Jesus. Throw him. Here you are in the tank. Here you are armored. Here we are can take. Now remember, don't get out of the tank. Stay in the tank. The tank can go anywhere you want to go. Why? Because it's Jesus. So not only is Jesus in you, say Jesus is in me, but I'm in Jesus. If any man be in Christ. So you're in Jesus. When you get up and you present yourself to God like you're supposed to, boom, boom, my God makes sure your tank's secured around you. And we talk about the armor. The armor doesn't drop off. If you make a mistake, fall off. The armor just dims or gets brighter because the armor is armor of light. And who is the light? Jesus is the light. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. So you go to God, you plug in, and your phone gets charged. Your light gets bright. Don't pray. Don't cast your cares over on, on the, then your light gets splashed with mud. And you look like you. And the devil says, oh, that's Carrie. He's right in the open where I can get him. So you want to know why many Christians have a problem? Write me a letter if you don't agree. It's because they're not walking in and with Christ in God. Instead, they're wa walking for God with the most noble, probably heart. But you can't walk within yourself with just what you think is God's weaponry. No, you walk in Christ with Christ and let him use your weaponry through you. Did you get that? So therefore, you're under conflict. Instead of getting worked up, rest, worship a little, and send forth Jesus. Remember, you are in a tank. And the bomb of your speaking the word in prayer is a smart bomb. Please don't tell Jesus what to do. Come on, laugh with me. Oh, Lord, I see that such and such has this problem. I want you to go in and change such and such and do this. No, God wants you to say, Father, you see your brother, you see your sister, you see your potential child. They're having problems. Go in. You know what they need. Go in in the name of Jesus and straighten out every mess and get them focused and directed to approach you. Lord, I send you into their life and I place them into your hands in Jesus' name. Wow, that's powerful. You never left your tank. You never got upset. Hello? And you can maintain your, your flow. Somebody get something good out of that just a minute ago? Hope. Oh. God wants me to let you know when many people are troubled because they're not fighting the God way. Did Jesus get all upset when the devil challenged him? Did he rail and freak out? Nope. He simply delivered the word. Tina, that's a word to you. Simply deliver the word and enjoy, radiate, so all the people around you can see you love Jesus. Same with you, Sarah, and all of us radiate don't be so distracted to splash mud over the light because that's the satan knows that if it keeps you in conflict you'll be inefficient we'll feel inefficient something you're in conflict with your medication you're in conflict with where you live you're in conflict with the way things are done stop it don't you think you are being deceived 
Never thought of that, Pastor Kerry. Well, the idea is to get you and keep you in turmoil so the word of God cannot seat and grow. Everyone say rest. Look at your neighbor and say, rest in Jesus. Shall we get into this? I'm done preach my raspy boys. Cover these four areas. Number one, start your day out in the spirit. Come on. And you know, as much as people tell me, I go, the first question I ask them is, how's your prayer life? Some people avoid me for that. Because without a good, solid dwelling with God and giving him the time he needs to help right ourselves, then we'll go ahead and still love God, but we're going to suffer some excess troubles. Now listen, here's what Jesus said. Remember, in, in the garden with his disciples, he says, pray that you enter not into temptation. In other words, prayer keeps you in the spirit realm where Satan can't go. Being in the flesh and troubled and in conflict is where the devil will work wonders to play games with your head. And we don't want that to happen. Start your day out in the spirit of God to become skillful in the word of righteousness. Become skillful with the word. I'm amazed at how many Christians are so unskillful and I'm not picking on them. They can't tell you if they're going through the trib, if they're going to go pre-mid-trib or post or whatever. They can't tell you certain things because you're not quite clear about them. Oh, gosh, that is just what the enemy wants. So become skillful in the word. Three, stay in the tank. We're going to talk about that, laugh about that, because for many Christians, most of their trouble comes from them taking the law into their own hands. For taking measures themselves and not praying about it, not seeking God about it. And you know, we've all experienced it. Try to stay within the rhythm and the flow of Jesus Christ, your tank. And stay within that flow. Believe me, he'll give you plenty of time to play and enjoy. It's not always an assignment. No, it's a lot of fun. But if you don't stay in the tank while you're having fun, you might get an arrow in your head while you're on vacation. Wouldn't that be trouble? Have you, let me just describe. Have you had, ever had a vacation from hell? You know, when you start off, everything broke, flat tires, this and that. Now, don't raise your hand, please, because we've all had something like that, maybe a day like that. That's a day without prayer. What did that day do? It told you that something's missing. Go to God. Why wait till everything is telling you something's missing? Go to God. Go to God so something isn't missing. Someone shout amen. All right. Thirdly, stay in the tank and use his name as a weapon. And then fourthly, we are fellow laborers. Don't hit each other with a pitchfork and with the way in which you win souls. We're not supposed to be fighting amongst ourselves. There is something that you, I need to caution you about, and most people don't understand it. Remember, the devil wants conflict. So listen, don't be in conflict with a brother and sister. If for some reason they want to be all up, wrapped up in conflict, just smile at them and say, I haven't got time to be in conflict. I remember I used to say this. When somebody wants to tell you a little bit of information they shouldn't be telling you, it's called gossip or whatever, or bearing a tale. You see, a bearing a tale is just as bad as gossip because you're telling something to someone that they don't need to hear. Hello? And God doesn't like it because if I, if, if, that, if I do that to you, like I tell you that a pastor doing so and such and such, I'm bearing a tale and I'm in big trouble with God. Don't be doing that kind of stuff. Say amen. Are you learning anything? Wave at me. If you've been doing that, pray for a crop failure. All right, point one. 
Start out your day in the spirit. John 7, please. This is why. How many here are born again? Wow, thank you, Jesus. So you have God inside, like a, a wellspring, like a river. You're connected to heaven. And there's a, a river flowing down, a creek, giant river power flowing into your spirit, man. Not from the outside in, but from the Jesus part out. Can you say amen? God pours out of us. He's already pouring into us from above spiritually to pour out of us here on earth. We are a vessel. Vessels contain something. God wants to pour himself out of us. Say amen. And you're not a crackpot, so it's okay. John 7, verse 37 says, On that great and notable day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out. There's a mass of people there saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly or heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. See, Holy Spirit hadn't been, it's not been Pentecost yet. And the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not resurrected or glorified. But in you will be a river springing up all kinds of life. Here's the key. We have been conditioned to tap the outside sources of what we've grown up in. That's okay to an extent. But God now, as a new creation in Christ, wants us to tap the inside. He says, wisdom, God inside of you, is like a, a deep water. And those of understanding will know to deep, dig down deep and draw God out of them. Can you say amen? Well, why should I go to God? I can go to the internet. That's a joke, by the way. So let's go to our next scripture. This is the one I want us to see. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Paul says, I beg you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, your spirit man, present your bodies a living sacrifice. What are we to do with our body? Present. What? Is it a package? Yes. It is an earth suit. Present your body to be pressed and ironed and clean before God. Lord, I lay my body down, pick it up with it pressed clean and desanitized. And when you say, Father, I come to you in Jesus' name, and I want to spend just enough time to present my body to you. Fill me up, Lord, like a gas station of your spirit. Guide my steps. Help order my day. And Lord God, and Jesus is Lord. And so, Lord, I'm going to let Jesus take the lead. But I'm going to enter my day in faith. That's all you need to do. How long did that take? Slow down a little bit and spend a little more extra time. And you'll leave your day and enter your day so more well, let's say, uh, totally more blessed. All right, so present your body a living sacrifice, holy, set apart, acceptable to God. How can our body be acceptable? When we lay it down at his feet. Which is your reasonable service. I don't like the translation there. It's not our reasonable service. It's really what's required in, other, in order to walk in the spirit. So reasonable means your manner of worship. We have to lay ourselves down in order for God to live through us so that we can accomplish the things God wants us to do. We all know that. Say amen. But for many believers, they don't know that. They have no stability. They're fighting battles that have been already won. They're in conflicts where they're involved in stuff they shouldn't. And your heart bleeds because these are your friends and relatives. You pray for them. You teach them the word. You learn and get yourself trained through the principles of God. Say amen. And then, and do not be conformed. Don't let the world out there push you to being like everybody else. 
but be transformed like Christ by the renewing of your mind, the way you think. Because as a man thinks, he's going to do it. If you think hard enough on a candy bar, you're going to find somewhere to eat it. That's what lust and desire is, and that's how Satan can suggest things. Be careful. But you transform by redoing your thinking that you may, the word prove is an interesting word, that you may examine in the scripture, understand, and demonstrate those. That's what it is. What is the good? What is the acceptable? And what is the perfect will of God? Now, how many here know when you got born again, you tasted how good the Lord is? And then, as you got a little older, you started testing your wings of what you could do. And for some people, what they could get away with. And they found out what God would accept and not accept. And as you grow through that and, and you become strong and established in the word, then you find the perfect will of God and you get busy about your father's business. Say amen. It works just like that. But we have to stay consistent. Point one, church, the born-again child of God is a new type of species. We learn differently. We're a God-indwelt being. We have the ability to walk with Christ and to release Christ in the earth. Be it done on earth as it is in heaven. Two, the enemy can't look or enter the spirit realm where you and I are supposed to be every day. How? Because God won't let him. You know, remember that veil from in the temple that kept people from just entering the holy place? Well, God put a veil over Satan's eyes. He can't look into what God is saying and doing with you. Only when we leave the presence of God, don't leave the spirit in your presence, in your, in, your, in your prayer closet, but take God with you in the tank so Satan can't interpret what you want to do. Hello? Because you're hidden. If you're in the tank, you're not out of the tank. If you're in Christ, you're not out of Christ. So either be in or be careful not walking out of it. Because even though the enemy doesn't have many weapons, he has the ability to have you to curse your own self. Listen to me. Did you know Christians are, are notorious by acting out in the flesh will often do things to curse their own walk? God forbid. You don't want to do things that are going to create things that are going to give you trouble. You don't want to hand a gun to the guy that's going to shoot you. So Christians, we need to sober. When, when the scripture says sober up, your enemy's looking. So we need to get into this wonderful lesson. The first thing you need to do so you stay within your head and in Christ is to present yourself so that your body doesn't get out of hand. Can you say amen? Because judge yourself for a minute. When you are in the flesh and you're so busy, your prayers are very surfacy and very shallow. And when you're really heartfelt with God, your prayers are deep and they're short, but they're meaningful. See the difference? By presenting ourselves, verse point three, to God in Jesus' name, we place ourselves into the spirit realm. We become invisible because of the light that brightens around us. Remember, armor doesn't fall off. Jesus is the armor. He never leaves, never forsakes. So I know it does says put on the whole armor of God, but he's also talking to people who haven't been born again in that scripture. So once you put it on, keep it bright. Say amen. And you do that by keeping in with God every morning. Every morning you say hello to God. You. Hi, God, I love you, God. Boom, that's all you need. Fourthly, notice it says to present yourself before God, which is required of us. Amen. Second point, 
become skillful in the word of righteousness. Skillful. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. For though by the time you ought to be teachers, you need that someone teach you again. I think the body of Christ, we're all coming back to the main things, the plain things. To teach you again the first principles of the oracles or utterances of God. And that you have need of milk and not solid food, for you are a babe. For everyone who partakes only of the milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a baby. Now, folks, one of the teachers that taught me was uh, Pastor Cole. He started a thing called the Timothy Project. He says, babies don't make babies. Adults make babies. So don't put somebody immature who can't even handle themselves yet in too much authority because all they'll tell everybody is how miserable they are. Babies have to grow and become skillful in the word of God. And so I'm not saying you're babies. So please don't accept something. Just think about it. So don't give something or responsibility to somebody who can't carry that. They, they might be developed physically. They might be able to do things physically, but mentally they got crazy ways of thinking. And spiritually, there's no development. Be careful not to put a novice in a position of authority. I'm going to say this. We have a lot of young pastors out there, and they don't know enough to really help the body of Christ. They need to be seasoned and skillful in the word of righteousness. Well, tell me who they are. You guess. Take a look and listen to the shallow or the depth of the teaching. All right. So say, all right. So he says, by that time, you need to be a teacher. Verse 13 says, everyone who partakes of milk is unskillful, but solid food belongs to those who are of a full age. Okay. Those through, listen, by reason of use, by doing the word, doing the word, experience, doing the word. What do you do if you feel like you fail? Get up and do the word. You see, by the reason of the use. Now, when you start off exercising, you might feel a little out of breath, but keep pushing it. Keep pushing it, sis. Don't let yourself be, I'm waiting for God to do something. He already did something. Now, get up. And start exercising, you see. We're talking about spiritually as well as physically. Are you with me? Solid food belongs to those by the reason of their use. Have their senses. Exercise to know the difference. Discern both good from evil. And once you get to walk in and be consistent with God, you're, you're spiritually exercising. You become very sensitive to how God thinks about everything. You're, you mind your P's and Q's. You don't do things without people asking you to do things. You ask, can I help you? But don't start doing things because you think you know somebody. You're not God. That's very dangerous. Especially if they're getting to know people. Don't push yourself on people. Make yourself so lovely in Christ that they want to know about you. That's revival. Revival isn't forcing and criticizing. The scripture of the gospel is making the world jealous to want to know your Jesus. Our Jesus. Say amen. Look what Ephesians 6 says, tells us also to be skillful in the word. I'm going to have to read it quickly. But most of all, look at the sword of the spirit. It says, finally, those of you that are mature, skillful in the word, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God or in, plug it in, charge it up, that you may be able to stand against all the tricks of the devil. Why? Because Jesus is smarter than the devil. And if he's in charge and he's covering you, he certainly can let you know before you're about to make a big mistake. Say amen and get out of your tank. Uh, Pastor, are you saying if I get out of Jesus, I'm not saved? No. I'm just saying if you get out of Jesus, you're in the flesh and you're easy shots for the enemy to poke things at you and come at you. And listen, 
You're not to be that way. Stay within God's protection pin and let the Lord be your shepherd. Again, many believers are living for God, but they're living only to a small amount. They're getting so beat up, tripping over dogs and silly things, or bothering. I'm upset because you want me to do the dishes again. We're real spiritual things, you know. Then he says, take up the whole armor of God, which is Jesus. And with that, the, put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Put on, take up the, the, the shield of faith, wherewith you can do what? Quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. How many? When I saw that, I went to my, my college professor and I said, you said we have holes in our armor because of different things and that we're not to turn our back on the enemy because there's no armor behind us. And I find that really not in the word. He just told me to run along. Your armor is so complete that if you'll learn to walk with Jesus like he asks you to and with the help of the Holy Spirit, you'll become mostly invisible and your life will take on a better ease because we're not laboring so hard and worried about it so much. We're not being irresponsible and not praying about it, but we're being responsible to keep ourselves in the tank and use the weaponry that God gave us that Satan can't fight against. You see, he can't fight against that name above every name. Hello? He can't fight against the name of Jesus where every knee shall bow and tongue confess. And when you say, Father, in Jesus' name, I send forth your name in the healing power of your word, and I place it upon such and such, explode it in them, and as if you were standing there touching them, I release it in Jesus' name. Well, I got no sweat off my brow. I'm still in the tank and the protection. Do you have children? Send the word on them every day. Well, am I supposed to pray for them every day? Yeah, but pray for them like you're doing shots and squirts of blessings. Scored an extra blessing on him today. Do you have a list of all of them? Do you memorize them? I'm not talking about everything and everyone in your family. I have a list of all of you. I don't even have to go down a line. I put you all in different roles of categories so I can remember you all. And your families and your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Great, great for some. Put you on the altar of God. Ask that God would go in and draw you closer to God. That you'd be disease-free, sickness-free, and accident-free. All the days of your life that you pursue God because he has more to show us that we could ever learn. And don't let religion get a hold of you and trip you up and bang you around. And certainly don't make choices for God in your life. Hey, God. I choose this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. You're going to have a real bad trip around the horn. Why? Because you're in control, and you're over here when you need to be right here. Not in church, I mean, just with God. All right, you still with me? So, he says, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. It's a sword. It's a lightsaber. It's a light sword. When you speak the word of God, it's powerful. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, I send forth your word to so-and-so. Lord, you see their life and how much they're astray. Lord, go in and begin to draw them closer to you. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. You see, I happen to be one of those ones that believe that my words are powerful. That my request to God, like he said, God will answer. I have no selfish desire in my requests because all of Linda and my needs are met because we pray for the needs of others. When you pray for the needs and the businesses of others to prosper and be in health, guess who's covered? You are. I know one lady who was looking to get a, a recording contract, and she was a wonderful singer, beautiful recording artist, but she couldn't get a break. 
and she was jealous of all the other people getting their breaks and going down there and, and, to, uh, and getting their contracts and everything, and she just get pal and bitter about it. And one day God spoke to her and said, why don't you bless all those people and be glad for them and bless them and see what happens. So she says, Lord, instead of me feeling like I'm left out and I'm not blessed, Lord, help me to bless them and pray for them. And as soon as she started to do that, guess who called her up? Three different recording places to sign her up. You see, sometimes we're our own block. And the only way to get beyond that, so without getting you ritualistic or on a search pattern to see what it is, go to God daily and let him keep making you and fixing you and making you whole. Say amen. All right, let's go to our next point. Stay in Jesus, stay in the tank. Say amen. Colossians 3, we read it earlier, 1 through 3 says, You are risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above. Keep your eye on Christ and how to operate in the computers. You're operating in a computer realm. Now you go, oh, God doesn't need computers. So there you go thinking, really. God uses the equipment. Where do we get the idea for a computer? A mass worldwide web and all that. Well, see, you're sitting in Jesus, and all of his equipment works well. Jesus doesn't have any blindness. Jesus doesn't have any selfishness. Jesus doesn't have any sin, doesn't have anything. His equipment going through Christ, listen, is like going to an unlimited computer access. And God says, you have all things to pertain to life, in life and godliness through Christ. So what do we do? We start trying to name it and trying to claim it and trying to be somebody. And here's the biggest one. You don't try to be somebody. You are somebody. Relax and learn and be trained how to do it God's way. Now, I used to be a real prayer warrior, and man, I wear myself out about every other week, have to take a vacation. That is not warring in the spirit. Hello. And so let's look at all our good assets, all right? Are you with me? Stay in Jesus the tank. So if you're risen with Christ, seek things above. Why? That's where your wisdom and your knowledge comes from. And not on things of the earth, don't look at yourself. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Pray God keeps you from feeling sorry for yourself. What a waste of time. I mean, the, oh, the occasion is there. Oh, don't do that. Your focus is not in heaven. It's on you. No. Wake up. Satan doesn't care about your emotions. He care about you being in conflict with God or whatever. So seek those things which are above, not on things of the earth, for you died. Christians today are still alive. They're still living for God so much that they offend people. Turn or burn, shake or bake, read the book or cook. Cry or fry. I had them all down. No. You share a gospel of invitation. I mean, you're going to a good church. It's a good church. How do you share about it? You got somebody working for you that says they're Christian but hasn't settled or she hasn't settled on anything. Say, come on, man. My church is on fire. Let's get really into the word. Do you talk like that about your church? I hope so. That's why before everybody came. Oh, yeah. We're a church. <laughs> you know I'm making fun, right? Fire. Nobody chases a hearse. They chase a fire truck. An ambulance. Can you say amen? The idea is be a good representative of God. Say amen. Stay in your tank. All right, go with me to 1 John 5, verse 18 through 19. Now, I give you the addresses, even though sometimes I only read a portion. 
It says, we know that whoever is born of God does not practice sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself in God. Every day you present yourself, you keep yourself in God. And the wicked one, what? And the wicked one, what? And the wicked one, what? You say it with your mouth. Touches me not. You have to declare it. You don't trip over dogs and help break yourself. Jesus doesn't allow that. That was a day without prayer. We all trip. We all get upset. But Jesus said, I even sent my angels to bear thee up, lest you dash a foot against a stone. Remember that scripture? God doesn't want us tripping around. He says, if you do these things and you let them come out of you, you will neither stumble or be unfruitful in the will of God. Stumble. Doesn't mean just spiritually stumbling, but also physically. God doesn't want you falling down. Hello? Stay in the tank. Now, please, don't get mad at me like some people do. They want to justify their falling down. Don't get mad at me. I, every time I fell down is when I wasn't in the tank. I'm telling you the truth. Don't do what I did. Stay away from that. Take the things that I did. And let me pass them on to you to not do those things and practice these things instead and watch your life take on even more of a blessing that God has previously designed for you. They keep himself in Christ, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God. Everyone's, how many here are of God? Raise your hand. Say, I'm of God. You say it with your lips. I'm of God, see. When the devil comes at you, say, oh, I belong to God. When you do that, he backs off. Why? Because you just placed your hands and yourself into the realm where Satan can't go. Remember, conflict. He gets you in conflict. Conflict, conflict. Why? Because you can't be in the spirit and be in conflict at the same time. Remember, he doesn't have any other tools. There should be wars, rumors of wars, gossip, division. All these things are tools of the devil. Don't you let the devil play you as some kind of broken record. Say amen. Now look at this next phrase. We know that we're of God and the whole world lies under the sway or control of the wicked one. You want to know why politics are so bad? Under the sway and control of the wicked one, except for the Christians, we're under a new Lord. So vote right. Schools under the sway of the wicked one. That's why a lot of them are broken. Not all of them. But that's why there's so much brokenness. That's the devil. The devil's never been able to do anything quite right. He tried to make his own man. He failed. You could follow from the ape all the way up until almost homo sapiens sapiens, us, and you know what? That's all his mistakes. That's not God. Those are all the bones of the devil trying to hybrid his own mankind to mine his minds. Now, if you don't know much about the Bible, this seems like way out there, Pastor. Not at all. It's right there in the Bible. The problem is people have been so focused on trying to overcome their problems and try to do with their life, they haven't got time to learn, praise, to worship, hardly even get to church. Does that sound like you? Then who's God? You can rectify that by simply presenting yourself daily to God and say, help straighten me out in my scheduling, the way I'm thinking, the way I'm speaking. And when you start doing that, guess who starts to become in control? Come on, smile up at me. Say, I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Church, why then do so many believers have problems? Now you know. 
Jesus has all authority in heaven and earth because the enemy has conditioned us to take matters in our own hands often. That's why we go to God on a regular basis to be washed, cleansed, to be skillful, trained, why? To learn to die away from ourselves, to be dead to ourselves, so that we don't get in the way, and so God can bring out the new creation, the new life in us. Say amen. Two, the enemy has been stripped of all authority, but he prostitutes authority from you. He'll tell you something and then suck the conflict out of you. He'll tell you that your Aunt Jessie hates you, and have her call and say, you know, I've never really liked you. And now the conflict is going, you see. But you're not going to let that happen. Nor are you going to talk about it. Hello? I believe this. You might laugh at me. I believe the reason why the devil comes to many people and tries to get them all full of conflict is because he's starving for power. And he's running out of gas. How much power can he suck from you, believer, by you not getting yourself right with God and not doing the right things? And, of course, I'm not referring to any of us here. I'm referring to all of us here. We're all measuring ourselves with the word. But don't measure yourself with another Christian because he that measures themselves among those that measure themselves are foolish, the Bible says in Corinthians. Don't compare your walk with someone else. Compare your walk with Jesus. Amen. And then thirdly, every man gets tempted when we get away from Jesus and drawn away by our own desires and enticed. I remember when I was a kid, I got a thing called gold fever. My dad took me up into the hills with a friend of mine and he showed us how to get gold in the pan. And boy, we got a little bit of gold, about that much. Oh! And so guess what I wanted to do all night, the next day and the next day? The fever got a hold of me. That's an old term for the interest of getting it or might having a treasure. We call it the gambling spirit. It's what Satan does to a human being, putting a carrot over the front of you to kind of guide you. If you just did this, you'll get back with that later. If you just borrow from Peter to pay Paul, and it's got to us leading Paul on this, this thing. That's Satan. That's the devil. God doesn't get you to follow a thing or an idea. He wants you following Jesus. To my next scripture, Isaiah 54, look at this. No weapon formed against you will prosper, verse 17. And every, listen, every tongue which rises up against you in judgment, people condemning you and judging you, you shall condemn. Why? Because God condemns, condemns it. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. <laughs> <clears throat> I got a hiccup and a cough at the same time. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their rights, righteousness is from me, saith the Lord. In other words, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Stay in the tank. Say amen. Proverbs 133, y'all know this one. And whoever listens to me shall dwell safely and be quiet from any fear of evil. Proverbs 1, 33. Let's move on to our next point. We are fellow laborers in the harvest. Folks, there's only one harvest of souls. And it started way back in the beginning of man. You see, in the Old Testament, when a person loved God, it was put on their account that they are saved. Were they actually born again? Did God actually live in them? No. But because they believed in God, God stuck them on a special list 
and said if they die, they'll go into paradise or into the belly of the earth and be held there until the coming of the Lord, his death and resurrection, where they will be led captive and all of humanity would be set free if they accept his son, Jesus. You see, Jesus is a tree of life. And Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now before us is Jesus. All of humanity is given a chance for them to eat of the tree of life in Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? And receive eternal life, not by their own merit, but by their walking with Jesus. So God can lead us out of here. Remember, the earth is a prison for Satan and his devils. Never meant for mankind to be imprisoned here. Never meant for the devil to fall. Never meant for the havoc he's done it. But it nevertheless happened, and man is right in the midst of it. Our job is to choose Jesus, be marked for his escape, just like the Israelites when they left Egypt. Say amen, somebody. So we are fellow laborers. Look with me to Matthew chapter 9. We're going to finish up with this. Verse 35 through 38. Then Jesus went about all the cities and all the villages, and we should be doing this too with the relatives and the people you know. Pray for them that they be healed. You got somebody over the house and your little grandchild or maybe somebody has got the sniffles? Get the oil out and anoint them. Let them hear grandma or, or mom pray over them. They need to see Jesus active in our lives so they know where the light, the city to follow out of darkness. And so he healed in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness, every disease among the people. Verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. Remember we told you that's God's love for them because they were weary, scattered like sheep having no shepherd. That's the human race. They might act like they know what they're doing. They're totally scattered. Just take a look at people trying to give an excuse why things are. And then just says, well, do you have a solution? And all you hear is doublespeak. I'm glad we're here because for the fact that there is a great need here, I am here for the great need here. That's all the need is met need. And you know what I mean when I say that. Do you know what that is? That's called doublespeak. In other words, I can say a whole lot about nothing. Be careful of the trees that we put in power. Make sure they have good fruit on them. Not a whole lot of nothing. So he says, then he said, verse 37, to his disciples, for the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We should be praying for each other that we be very good at winning souls and touching lives. It's time to get over your embarrassment of praying over the meal. It's time for you to get over your embarrassment and reaching out to somebody and leading them through the sinner's prayer of the prayer of salvation. It's time for you to get over yourself because you're supposed to be dead and get that Jesus out there and get starting touching lives because there's one thing that pleases God more than anything else is your love for him and your love for others winning them to Christ. Mark 16 says it this way. In verse 15 through 20, and he said to them, go into all the world. How much of the world? Well, the rest of Puyallup is pretty good. Sumner. We have a neighborhood right here. Many of you could just take a good day and go visit some neighbors. Maybe not. He who believes and is baptized, you receive Jesus into your heart. And he who does not believe shall be condemned. These signs will follow them to believe. How many believers we have? Wave your hand, say, I'm a believer. So guess what? God is the one in you doing these things. Not you. You just lay hands on the sick. He causes them to recover. You speak with tongues. He builds you up. You do what he's asked you to do, and he does the big part. Can you say amen? You get on the bike, he will pedal it for you. But you got to get on the bike. And these signs will follow them who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. There's no demon in hell to fight against you and your tank. Confide, don't deal with the devil in your head and reasoning. He's so smart. He'll twist your head off your shoulders and hand it to you. 
Don't live in your head, God. Live from your heart, God. It isn't what you know, it's what you do with what you know. They shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. Now, I know people take this wrong. The devil uses people. Do you believe that? The devil can use people and, and hurt you. Hello? And if you're not careful, you can hear the enemy speaking through people. Instead of judging them and go, oh, you can handle that. It shouldn't affect you. Why? Because you can recognize what's coming out of them isn't God. Say amen. Some look up at me. Say amen. And you hear that. It grieves you, yes. But you can handle that. Why? Because then you can plant seed and turn them about. If you drink or partake of anything that's deadly, scripture, doctrine, poison, it shall not hurt you. Why? Because you're in Christ. You're in the tank. First of all, if you sit down and somebody slips something on you, God will quickly say, don't eat that. Kind of like what he said in the garden. When God says simple things, don't do something, it's for a reason. Hello? Come on, everyone. He's your heavenly father. He loves you. You will handle a serpent. You drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. And you shall lay hands on the sick and they... You see... I want to do a class on showing you how to release the anointing. Would you like a class like that? How to release the anointing out through your hands, through your words. So with that anointing, remember the anointing and Jesus are the same. It's are the same. So like, it's like a, a piece of bread dough. You got a, the one piece of bread dough, but you grab a piece of the bread dough and you tear off a piece. It's still part of that bread dough, but it's a separate piece. Every time you speak the name of Jesus, you send forth Jesus, you're speaking the same powerhouse as Christ. But you're sending pieces of him as weapons and tools. Can you say amen? You have a sword of the spirit, a lightsaber that cuts everything. Demons and, and darkness is no problem to those who walk in the light. Say amen. And so very finishing with you, I kept a while. So then after they had heard this and received Jesus, they went everywhere preaching the word and God did the miracles. Point one, church, Jesus said for us to do the works of Christ, not our own works for Christ. It was needful for Jesus to go and sit down with his father so he could send the Holy Spirit and authority. Amen. And we are his ambassadors. That means someone who speaks for, acts in behalf, and does just like those who sent him. So you're empowered by God to do miracles, signs, and wonder by releasing Jesus. You are in the tank, completely covered. You have weaponry that's beyond this world. Now, don't do religious things and don't do things in the flesh and don't try to live up to that. Live with Jesus, and Jesus will carry you up to that. And he'll start shielding you. He'll start protecting you like you've never had it before, as long as you keep this mindset in front of you and the picture of who you really are in Christ. Did you get something out of that this morning? Give the Lord praise.